Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, this is a new week that we've entered and I am trusting the Lord that His love will surely be made manifest in your life. Now, it's so important because we've been talking about the manifestation of God's love. And listen to me, as you open your heart to receive these words, you will not just see, you will become an example of the manifestation of God's love. Praise God. Before we go into today's broadcast, let's do what the Lord has commanded us to do on each broadcast. You know what that is? Let's make demand for our daily bread. Praise God. Now, you know, it's amazing sometimes, you know, people just think, is it necessary to be making these declarations every day? You see, Paul said, because of the simplicity of the gospel, men stumble. Jesus said, make that request. Give us this day our daily bread. Don't ignore what he has said. He said, this day, meaning it's every day. Now, we don't do this because we just have a revelation of the scripture. We do this because we receive a command from the Lord on this broadcast that I should lead you every day to make these demands. And all you need to do is believe. If you believe that God is your sustainer, if you believe that it's Him who supplies all your needs. Now, I know many people don't believe. Yeah, oh, they don't. They say God, but they don't really believe in their hearts. There are even preachers that tell you that God does not give money. Yes. Now, leave those people aside. Praise <laughs> God. If you believe that God sustains you and He meets your need, and just like David said, the Lord is my shepherd, then join me right now as we make this demand in faith. Remember, releasing your faith. It simply means believe that what you're going to ask will come to pass. Join me right now and say, Father, I demand today for my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. So, so, so what's going to happen? He will supply. He will answer. So how is he going to answer? He is God. The most important thing is the answer getting to you. No one can dictate how God is going to answer. Nobody can tell you this is exactly how God is going to respond to it. No. But one thing I'll tell you, look for his word. Look for his word. Where do I look for his word? In your heart. When you pray, hear me. When you pray and believing for something, search your heart. His voice is always in your heart. You see, I've told you on this broadcast before, even when people say, I heard an audible voice, that audible voice was not from the roof. It wasn't from heaven. It was in your heart. Praise God. Even when God speaks, has God spoken before out of heaven? Yes, the Bible records that. But the day God did, you know what happened? There was an argument. Some people said it thundered. <laughs> Others said, an angel must have spoken to him. But Jesus said, that word came from God. You see that? So they all heard something. So don't tell me God doesn't speak out loud. He does. But even when he does, you still receive his word in your heart. Now that's why some people say an angel spoke to him. Others said it turned that because they heard a sound but they didn't get the meaning of the sound. The meaning of the sound will be found in your heart. Elijah had the same experience when he was running away from Jezebel. He went into that cave and guess what? There was an earthquake, there was a wild wind, but then the Bible said the Lord was not in the earthquake. The Lord was not in the wild wind. Now why was he looking for God in the earthquake? Why was he looking for God in the wild wind. And what exactly was he looking for? That he got to that point and said, the Lord is not there. Oh, the wild wind. 
the Lord was not there. How did he know the Lord was not there? Because the word of the Lord did not come to his heart. Listen to me. God always speaks. And that's the purpose of this broadcast, to get you to understand that God is always speaking. I'm telling you the truth. He always speaks. I call him a talkative. Yes, because he's always speaking. The problem is many do not listen for his voice. Every challenge you face is demanding the word of God from you. Every excitement you face is demanding the word of God from you. So when Elijah saw that earthquake, what was he looking out for? The word that will come to his heart in the midst of that earthquake. So when no word came, he knew that God was not in it. The same thing I've told you on this broadcast before. You know, sometimes we go for meetings and then there is a loud noise. There's display people screaming and shouting, falling under the power like we call it. All kinds of things happening. And people say, wow, God visited us today. And then you ask, so what did God say? Um, no, you know, in fact, the pastor didn't even have time to preach. It's not about the pastor preaching. What did God say in the midst of all that noise and falling and dancing and all? And it's not every time God must speak. Hey, then God wasn't there. He wasn't there. The mark of God's presence is his voice. Believe me, the mark of God's presence is his voice. When I say his voice, his word come into your heart. So you might have a quiet meeting where no pain moved. But that's when the word of the Lord is coming to your heart. Even when a preacher is preaching, it's not just about what he's saying. A preacher may be preaching good, but yet the Lord is not speaking. Where you search for the word of the Lord, it's not the preacher's mouth, it's in your heart. Even as I speak to you now, you'll be hearing words in your heart, words reminding you of something God have told you before, words reminding you of, of instructions, of commands, of giving you fresh commands. Some of you will be hearing, oh, you need to start doing this, you need to start doing that. Now that's God's word coming to your heart. I may not say it, but you see, as I'm creating the atmosphere, that's all the service is for. That's all this broadcast is for. That's all any meeting you go for. What's on the preacher's mind is to set the atmosphere for God to speak to you. Now, let me tell you this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Even, you know, sometimes you say, oh, there are false pastors, there are false teachers. I've told you on this broadcast, we don't bother about those people. We don't. You know the reason? Because, you see, instead of bothering ourselves with false pastors, now I hear, you know, sometimes I've, I've seen ministers who come up to say their, their mission or their ministry is to point out false prophets and false teachers. Now, I make bold to tell you that ministry was not given to you by God. You are just being emotional about it. And you have taken up an assignment that God did not give you. The danger in that is this. You will get into trouble and God may not bail you out of that trouble except you have the wisdom of God to navigate yourself out. Not because we are afraid, but because, you see, you don't want to bother yourself about what God is not bothered about. What we should be concerned about is who are the true brethren. You see that true brethren will not follow false teachers or false prophets for long. No matter how you coerce them in, they will hear the voice of the Lord, even in the midst of that false church or false ministry. I'm telling you the truth. There is no way you get to that the word of the Lord will not come to you. And this is one truth about life. Jesus said, my sheep hears my voice. He doesn't say exactly where his sheep will hear his voice. Now, like I said earlier, we create the atmosphere for God to speak. But God is not limited to our own atmosphere. 
So in the midst of a nightclub where music is jamming and everybody is partying, one can hear the voice of God in that place. So what will you be? I'm talking to God, speaking out and calling out to his children. And that's why we pray for God's children. We pray for them. We are not scared of the wolves. Because God's children truly have the ability to resist the wolf. He said, resist the devil and he will flee. It's the ability to resist the devil that matters, not blocking the devil from coming. Well, that's the truth. So listen, strengthen yourself to respond to God's voice. When he speaks to you, rise up and do what he has told you to do. He will always speak. If you're his child, you will hear his voice. There are people that will never hear the voice of God. And believe this, not everybody on this earth is a child of God. Not everyone on this earth is a creation of God. You may argue this from now till thy kingdom come. But one day, you will get to that point where you realize not everyone on this earth is a creation of God. That's why God said in the book of Revelation, John was seeing this vision. And then he said, he noticed that after the judgment was set, the dead brought up the dead. The sea gave up everyone it has swallowed. The next thing that happened was this. The book was open. And anyone whose name was not found in the book of life, that one was cast into the lake of fire. Why were they cast into the lake of fire? Not because of the sin they have committed. I want you to listen to me. Not because of all the terrible things they did. Some of them may have been nice, but because their names were not found in the book. Why were their names not found in the book? Study the scriptures. It was never written. Never written. Why was it never written? Maybe because they didn't give their life to Jesus Christ. No, sir. Your names, the names in the book of life, according to scriptures, was written before the foundation of the world. So before you were born, your name was already written in the book of life. And then there are those whose name was never written. So how did they come into this world? That's another day's talk. That's why I told you there are people on this earth who are not the creation of God. You have counterfeit people, just like you have counterfeit products. Every product originally made from a factory always have a serial code. Each product has a serial code. You can trace the day they were made. You can trace the day they were released from the factory. So also God, if God can number the hair on our heads, if God can make things like our fingerprint, our voices, your iris, if he can make it so unique that there is no other copy, how much more your name being in a book? Your concern in life is number one. Is my name in the book of life. I know preachers have taught and said, when you get born again, your name is written in the book of life. No, sir. Your name was there in the first place. That's why you got born again. It is God. And the Bible lets us know that there is a book called the Lamb's Book of Life. People get confused about this. But it's clear in scriptures if you can only study by the Holy Spirit. Why did I say that? Academic study may not show you this, but the Holy Spirit helping you and teaching you. That's why Jesus left us with him. Jesus said he's going, but then he's, le he's leaving us with the Holy Spirit. And one of the job of the Holy Spirit is to teach us all things. Then another important job is to guide us into all truth. So if there is no progression of you being guided into truth in your life, then we question the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. If you were deceived 20 years ago and 10 years ago and still deceived yesterday, then I question the Holy Spirit in your life. And hear me, God giving us the Holy Spirit is the greatest display of love that he did for us. And you know that's why Jesus died. Jesus died so that God will give us his spirit. Yes. 
The death of Jesus signified the death of man as a living soul. And that made it possible for God to birth the real man he intended from when he made Adam. He said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. He didn't achieve that in Adam. Now, I know I'm saying a lot of things that will take a whole study to, to, to make you see some. But everything I say to you is from the place of truth. And when the Holy Spirit is in your heart, he's the one that will convince you that this thing is true. There are times I've listened to a preacher many, many years ago, even till now. They will make a statement and then I'm like, huh? But the Holy Spirit will tell me he's right. And it, it might take me a while to understand how they or he is right. But the Holy Spirit is there to always be a witness. And his witness is always true. That's why it's not about the rightness of a preacher. It's not about how a preacher has been right. I've seen many preachers who were right before. I've seen them turn wrong. I've seen great preachers make mistakes. But the one who never makes mistake is the Holy Spirit. Even though you don't understand him now, believe him. Whatever he tells you in your heart, believe him. And because you'll find out maybe next week, maybe three days time, maybe next month, maybe two years time, you will find out that he was right. I share an experience with you. A few months ago, my car was always overheating. And I, I tried to find that, I took it to the mechanic. The, oh, the mechanic said, oh, we would need to wash the radiator. I said, no problem. They washed the radiator, fixed it back. A few days time, it started overheating again. How was the matter? I said, okay, let me try someone else. But then I heard in my spirit, change your radiator cover. I heard it. I heard him say that. And then I, I, I checked the radiator cover. I examined it. Nothing was wrong with it. I said, so why is he telling me to change it? Covered it again. Topped water. But it was still overheating. So I was wondering, okay, what's going on here? I started carrying, you know, extra water in the car. So the moment I see the temperature rising, I know what to do. But I kept hearing that word, change the radiator cover. God is my witness. I kept hearing that word. And each time I will examine, I did that about three times. I will examine the radiator, because this, this took about a month. Not that it was overheating every day, but you know, it just stays after two, three days, you know, it starts overheating. And sometimes it will even stay up to a week, then it starts overheating. But I kept hearing him tell me, change the radiator cover. I tried to prove that what I'm hearing is him, but the physical examination of the radiator cover didn't tell that there was any trouble. About a month after, the car started overheating and then I managed to drove to where I was going to and stop there. When I stopped, I allowed the engine to cool. And as I opened the radiator cover, I noticed the spring detached from the cover. And I, oh, really? Okay. So I went down, bought a new cover, replaced it, and that was the end of overheating. Why am I sharing this with you? A month before then, the Holy Spirit, who's always right, told me what the problem was. But I kept trying to physically see that he was right. It took a month for me to realize that he was seeing something in that cover that physical eyes could not see. Now, someone may misunderstand this and say the Holy Spirit now broke the radiator cover so that you can know. No, he didn't. There was a problem with it that I couldn't see with my physical eyes. Thank God it took a month. It could have been less. I could have obeyed him that same day. But I think of you that it has taken years and he's been telling you what to do, but you've not re re responded to him because you are looking at the physical situation. I pray today that an understanding will come to your heart and you will listen to that voice and obey him today. Think of how your life will change. Think of how you will be able to enter into the things that he has promised you. I pray for you today. If you will hear his voice, 
respond quickly to it because his voice is his display of love to you. I pray that the Spirit of God will guide your heart today and keep you in his love and make you see indeed that everything that you need in life he has already given to you. I pray that today will be the best day of every day you have lived on this earth and let it continue to increase because of his voice to you. In Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.